Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. And good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And today, well, it's the last Tuesday of the month, which means I have my awesome co-host, Tom Campbell, with me. Welcome to the show, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Laurie. It's uh, good to be here. Always. And Always. we sort of mentioned, I thought since last month, we talked about how we sabotage change, which is, I thought it was a really good conversation. I thought we brought up some very interesting points and I thought that we kind of play on this, not maybe sabotaging, but, you know, happiness comes from within and no matter what happens in our life, we should be in charge of how we respond underneath all of our stories and our experiences and our fears and our beliefs. We're ultimately in a loving space and a happy space. If we ask ourselves, you know, what do we want and keep asking ourselves, because ten, we often, <laughs> we often think of things like, oh, I just want a million dollars. Well, what will that million dollars do for you? Well, hopefully, as you get down looking at and keep asking that question, what do you want? Why do you want a million dollars? Ultimately, it should come to, I want to be happy. Me might say free, you might say love, you might, you might term it in whatever way you want, but ultimately it's happiness. So do we sabotage our happiness? Well, <laughs> we often put it that it's something outside of ourselves. Like, well, when I have this or I have that, or, you know, once this happens, then I'll be happy. And of course that elusive happiness is because it's outside of us. It's not it's not coming from that being place. It's not coming from mm -hmm. within. So I thought we talked about it. And I know okay. you have lots to say. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know, happiness, if you are in pursuit of happiness, mm. you will probably not find it. <laughs> happiness is not a thing that, that you know, there's not a, uh, uh, a prescription for happiness. Do this, do this, do this, and then do that, and you will be happy. It's not like that. You can't find happiness. You really have to be happy. And it's a byproduct. When you do all the rest of the things right, then you are happy. And what I mean by doing all the rest of the things right, we mean what we usually talk about is get rid of your fear. As long as you have fear, you're not going to be happy because being fearful is not a happy thing. So you have to work on getting rid of that fear, which means you have to get rid of that ego. You know, that you have to get rid of those beliefs. You have to be authentic. Mm. You know, you have to let go of your self-centeredness. So it's not all about you. Because, you know, you made the, the, the comment about people who think, oh, if just I could get that, you know, I'd be happy. Well, what they're really saying is if I just had things the way I wanted them, mm. if things were just the way I want them, then I'd be happy. <laughs> well, having things the way you want them generally will not make you happy because as soon as you think you have everything the way you want it, you'll have new ones and different ones. Oh, now that I got this, now I'd like to have that. And now you're unhappy again. You know, that, that doesn't work. You'll never get there with, with that. You have to be happy because you're not self-centered and mm -hmm. you care about others. You have, you know, to be happy, you have to not have uh, buttons or what do we call them? Uh, you know, trigger points, you know, you have, not, you have not to have those. If you're going to be happy, then you have to be such that it doesn't matter so much what other people do and say, you're okay. You know, you're authentic and you are confident and you're all right in life. You don't depend on other people to define um, who you are and to have to verify, you know, that you're okay. You know, you don't need other people's um, 
recognition and praise and so on in order to make yourself feel good about yourself. You feel good about yourself just because you and yourself are good. You know, you're not, uh, you don't have those fears. So happiness is a byproduct of getting rid of your fear. Mm. It's a byproduct. It's not something you go get. It's not something that happens to you if you achieve a particular thing. Because if you have a lot of fear and you have a million dollars and you have everything exactly the way you want it, you're still going to be unhappy. You see, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. You know, money cannot buy happiness. I guess that's an old, you know, <laughs> an old saying, you know, you can't buy happiness with money. You cannot. You can't buy happiness with with, uh, you know, what? Manipulating people to be the way you want them to be. Oh, I'd be real happy if my children did their homework and studied real hard and were obedient and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that's not the point. You know, it's not the way your children are or not are that makes you happy. Happiness has to come from within, as you say. It has to be a part of you. And the only way to get it is to get rid of that fear. Get rid of that ego, get rid of that I I need, I want. And as long as you're full of I needs, I wants, then you're not gonna be happy. You're always going to be wanting and needing and won't have it the way you like it. And that will upset you, you see? So when it's not about you and it's about others, then all that goes away. Mm -hmm. It's not about what I want, it's well, what can I give? And maybe right now there's nothing really to give. It's just, you know, I'm just, hanging out with people and it's fine. Just being there is enough. Well, then you're happy just being there, you see? And it doesn't matter that those people praise you or, you know, think you're wonderful or whatever. That's, that doesn't matter to you. What matters to you is that you're being part of, you know, the solution. You're being helpful to those people and not because of what you think you'll get from them and how they'll <laughs> like you afterwards and how they'll, you know, uh, think highly of you. That's not the point. If that's your reason, then you'll never be happy because that won't work. You have, you have to just be, that's why I say when everything else is right, then happiness just happens. You don't have to go find it. So that's where happiness comes from. Get rid of all those I wants because I, all those I wants make you unhappy when you don't have. Now, having, you think, will make you happy, but it won't. You, say, you can have, you know, if you could just say, well, okay, I'd like you, you know, to come here and do this, and I'd like you to do that, and I'd like to have a bank account full of endless money, and you can say all those things, but it wouldn't make you happy. Matter of fact, there's, a, there's some books that were written about um, the people who win the lottery. Mm -hmm. You know, and and what their lives are like after they get, you know, $50 million or whatever they get in the lottery. And very few of them turn out that the lottery makes them happy. Matter of fact, the lottery, winning the lottery often ends up making them less happy than they were before they'd won the lottery. Because now suddenly there's just, you know, the life was simple before, you know, and now that complicates everything. And they get into stuff rather than quality. You know, they get into a better house and a better car and a better this and better that. And when you get stuff focused, then that goes on and on and on. You know, even if you own your own private island, well, somebody else owns a bigger island than you do, <laughs> and you're unhappy. You know, <laughs> so you know, that doesn't. That never ends. And if you think, well, okay, if I just had even a small island, I'd be happy. Well, you wouldn't be because mm -hmm. you'd be on that small island and you'd be bored and you'd be this and you'd be that. And you'd talk to somebody and they'd tell you about how much more fun they had in somebody else's bigger island. And, <laughs> you know, it just would, it just would never end because inside you're insecure yeah. because inside you have fears that you're not good enough because inside you know, you depend on other people giving you your self-esteem. You know, how much other people like you or fawn on you or suck up to you or whatever. That's where your self-esteem comes from. And if you don't have that, then you become 
depressed and unhappy. You constantly need presence or you need attention or you need, you know, you need, you need, you need. And all of that needing is just self-centeredness. It's not about other, it's about you and your needs. And as long as you're like that, happiness will be elusive. No matter what, you know, how much stuff you have or how good you are at manipulating, it, uh, you just won't be happy. So happiness goes along with having a high quality of consciousness. It goes along with getting rid of your self-centeredness. Once the self-centered is gone, all those, all those uh, trigger points go with it. You know, all those trigger points start with I. I don't want this. I need that. You know, how could you do that to me? You know, all of that, all the trigger points are, all start with big me's and I's and it's all mm -hmm. about you. So when you get rid of those fears, then you're happy and you don't particularly need anything to make you happy. Even if you're just sitting in a room all by yourself, you're happy. Or if with your crowd of a lot of people, you're happy because you just are. It's a state of being. You live in that state of being, of being satisfied, finding peace, finding joy. You know, you can, you don't have to be, you know, in the limelight or you don't have to be, you know, hiding. You just, whatever, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, even if you're caught in the rain on a cold night and you don't have your umbrella, it doesn't <laughs> make you unhappy. It just makes you cold. And you can, survive that you know it's not like it's going to kill you and then it becomes almost fun in a sense you know it's part of life getting caught in the rain sometimes <laughs> and you don't think about it in negative terms you think about it in positive terms well isn't this different you know you have that sort of an attitude mm. so you look at the positive side of things when you let go of the self-centeredness because now it's about what can i give how can i help you know, what's, uh, what's a way that I can improve things, make the world a better place, wherever the scope is, you know, that's fine. And as you try to do those things, then it makes you happy. And as other people benefit from maybe your services or whatever, then that makes you happy. And if they don't benefit and they say, well, how come you only gave me this much? I want more. You know, well, that doesn't make you happy. You don't go, ah, you're in great, you know, slug. <laughs> you, know, you should be happy with what I give you. You know, well, that's your need then, you know, to be looked up to and, and for people to be grateful to you. Well, it goes right back to your own fears of not being good enough, which, you know, you're not happy. So let people be however they are and be happy with them that way. Learn to, to accept them that way. So, so, and so, let's say they're, they're crotchety and they're, they, maybe they're even negative and they complain a lot. Well, you have to learn that's okay. That's just the way they are. And when they start complaining and being crotchety, then, you know, it doesn't bother you. It's just them. It's nothing, you know, it's not personal. When you're self-centered, everything's personal. You take everything personal because everything's about you. That's what being self-centered means. So when you're not self-centered and somebody's grouchy or somebody says something rude to you or somebody, you know, says that you just, you know, failed that miserably or whatever, and you thought you did pretty well and you know, you're getting you're getting a hard time, it doesn't bother you because it's not about you. It's about them. They're grouchy. They're in a mood. They have a need to put people down. They have all this ego that only feels good if they can put other people down. So it becomes about them rather than about you. And if it is about you, maybe you did do something that wasn't good. Well, you think about it and you say, you oh, know, they're right. I should have thought about that or I should have done that better. Well, next time I'll do it better. And you're still not unhappy yeah. because now you just learned something and that makes you happy too. So you see, there's when when you get rid of the fear, there's no way to be unhappy. You just are always happy. Everything is always good. Now, that doesn't mean that you necessarily walk around with a big grin plastered on your face and, you know, and giggling all the time. <laughs> happiness, <laughs> happiness becomes your life. 
you know? So you don't have to be making jokes and laughing to be happy. Right. You know, you just feel good. Everything is good the way it is. Everything is just fine and moving on and everything's working as it should be, you know, and you just have this feeling that everything is good the way it should be. And, and there's no problems. You don't see anything negative. That's happiness. Right. So mm -hmm. happiness is, is only attainable as a way of life when you get rid of that fear. Now you can have happiness for short periods of time, even though you're fearful. You know, mm -hmm. happiness comes in, happiness goes. But we're not talking about, you know, something like that. People can be happy for short times because they get what they want. Oh, I've always wanted a convertible car. Now I finally can, you know, buy one and I'm so happy. Well, <laughs> that happiness doesn't last a long time. That happiness no, is then very... it's gonna rain and you're gonna have to put the convertible up. <laughs> <laughs> or it's gonna snow and you're gonna have to put it away for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that happiness grows old, you know, and that's not so much happiness as it is probably self satisfaction or you know, you you feel good that you achieve something or that you put somebody else down that you don't like or that you you know, slap someone that needed to be slapped and you're happy about it, you know, that is not real happiness. No. That's that's more self-serving stuff. Yeah. Happiness I'm talking about is when life is positive. When everything in your life and the people in it are all positive, even when they're grouchy, <laughs> it's okay because that person just needs to be grouchy. Now, that's just the way they are. They haven't learned not to be grouchy yet. They're on a path, they're learning, they're growing. And right now, you know, that's the way they're going to be. They're self-centered. So they're gonna, they're gonna maybe try to use you, maybe even abuse you a little, but that's just the way they are. So it doesn't bother you, it's okay. You know, you can deal with that. Now, if they, if they abuse you in a way that, you know, that hurts or that is a problem, then you need to go somewhere else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to say, oh, well, that's a you know, a little abuse. You know, all they did was, you know, beat me up. That's not a problem. You know, we're not talking about that kind of thing. You know, we're talking about your everyday life. And if people are going to be constantly rude to you and whatever, then they're really no fun to be around. So you tend to avoid them. You don't uh, put a lot of time there. Unless, of course, you have to because it's your significant other or your mother or your father or your sister. And then you just have to let them be and let it go. And you don't avoid them, but just they are that way. And you don't let it bother you. And what you'll well, find when you do that is really hard for people. <laughs> yeah. But you what know. you'll find when you do that, if you just let them be and you don't get sucked Engage. into their negativity, they will start being nicer to you. Yeah. They will stop being negative because it's kind of a game they play. They get negative, then you get negative, and they get negative, and there's this negative exchange. And that's really what they're after. That's the connection. That's how they connect the people. <laughs> that's the thing they want. And if you don't play the game, if you're just nice to them anyway, or neutral or whatever, then they begin to want to be nicer to you. They leave you alone. They stop saying negative things to you because you refuse to play the, the negative game with them. So everything gets better. Even those people who are grouchy get less grouchy if you're a happy person. And they stop doing those things and stop pushing your buttons because it doesn't work. Because then you see, if they're grouchy and they say something rude and you don't, they've got no justification. Now they are the ones that are being rude because you get rude back. Now, ha, well, you know, I always knew you felt that way. And now you see they they can justify their negativity. Right. But if you don't get negative back to them, they just see themselves as negative and you're not. Ooh, you see that kind of, backs them up a little bit. Oh, here I am negative and unpleasant, and they're not. 
Now, if I could just make them negative and unpleasant like me, I'd feel okay. I'd feel justified, and that'd be good. But when they when they refuse to do that, then I'm not going to do that to them anymore because that makes me look bad. I look bad even to myself when I talk to them. So everybody will start treating you better. Everybody will find you somebody that they'd like to be around because you're happy. You're positive. You're not complaining. You're not putting them down to make yourself feel bigger. You're not doing any of those games and you become a popular person. You become somebody that other people, you know, want to hang out with. So it all just works out, out well. And even the people, even if they're your brother or sister, or your significant other, if you don't give negativity back to negativity, you raise the probability that they'll learn not to be negative. You give them a space in which they can choose not to be negative. When you give negativity back, then it's that's just the game that's played. Everybody's going to be negative and that's it. But when you don't play, now they have a choice not to play either or to stop when they're playing and nobody's playing with them. You know, it's all, it's just they're negative. So it helps them find a space and the courage they need to grow up. And they may or may not do it. Depends whether or not they're ready to grow up. But that's up to them, not up to you. So happiness is a is a byproduct of not having fear. <laughs> it's a byproduct of being positive always. So if you're always positive, then you probably don't have fear because it's the fear that's what makes you negative. So just look at your life and say, well, have I been negative in the last six months? <laughs> well, let's make that it's the last six hours. You know, Have I been negative in the last six hours <laughs> or the last six minutes? You know, yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, for many people, yeah, the last six minutes would be a better one because a lot of people are just negative all the time. You know, if they if, even in normal conversation, they can only talk about what's wrong and what mm -hmm. doesn't work. Everything is either a complaint you know, about life, about other people, about their situation, and they just live in a negative space. Sure. And that means that they're not happy. They're not having a good time. Life is not good for them. And if that continues, it generally ends up in depression. That's that path, you know, it, it tends to spiral downwards if you get started on that path unless you can pull yourself out of it it tends to get worse and worse and worse and then you end up in a in a depression life sucks you know everything's bad everything's wrong you never get a break you know nobody really likes you and you know oh woe is me you know and then you get down into the self-pity and now you're stuck yeah now it, it takes a major act on your part to drag yourself back up out of that self-pity and, and depression. But a lot of people live their lives there. You know, it's not that un uncommon for people to be living most of their life in a state of depression. Now, maybe it's not a, you know, a life-threatening depression, but it's just a state of negativity, basically. What do we call that? Mild depression or mm -hmm. functional depression? or whatever, yeah, you can still work at your job, you can still have a relationship, but you're just not happy. And that's, I just, you know, walking depression. I don't know what you'd call it, you know, but I, a lot of people live that way. Yeah. And that's just their life. Their life is just a long series of negative things that happen and negative feelings. And the ego just keeps building it. Like the ego will just not let go. Like if you're, if you're in that state, then it's all ego just pushing your buttons and saying, well, this person's yeah. better. And you never, like, it's just that constant mind chatter in your head yeah. and the ego just going, yeah, you're not good enough here. Yeah. It's really hard to get out of if you're yeah. there. <laughs> it is, you know, these things, you know, I say spiral, but what I mean by that, that if you're, if you're negative, it's easier to be more negative. Mm -hmm. If you act more positive, it's easier to get more positive. You know, the things reinforce each other. So when you, when you become 
you know, negative, that kind of puts you in a, in a downward slide. That's what I call the spiral, you know, for negativity. That's that slippery slope. You start going down that way, and it's, it's a lot easier to get more negative than it is to go uphill against the grain and get more positive. So people tend to get worse until they hit some kind of floor, <laughs> and maybe they can just maintain that floor, you know, and just live that way. You know, that can just be their life. They, they say, well, life just sucks. Life just is hard. Life just, you know, is unhappy. And I don't know whether I'd say that most people are that way. Probably not, but certainly a large number of people, even if it's not the majority, it'd be a pretty large minority to live their life like that. And what, what a terrible waste yeah. to do that. When all of that negativity that they see and all of that pain and the suffering and life is hard, it's all self-created. It's all created out of their own choices. You know, it's not like this is an awful world and, you know, and it's hard to live here. People go to that idea because it absolves them from responsibility. But that's not really what's going on. It's not that it's such a hard world. Even when the world is hard, you can be happy. Right. You don't have to, like again, you don't have to be wealthy to be happy. You could be dirt poor and, you know, scrounge every day just to get enough food to eat, and you can still be happy. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, that's impossible. You know, if you're scrounging in foods, you'd, you'd be miserable and you'd be upset. Not if you weren't fearful. If you're not fearful, you know, then you could be in a situation that was difficult and it, you'd be okay with it because life can be hard sometimes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be negative. Right. That life is hard is something that you have to endure sometimes, you know, things happen and that shouldn't make you negative. What it does is makes you stronger. So, you know, I know people who are, uh, you know, are, are poor or have really sad things going on with them, and they're not unhappy about it. And that's not all they talk about. You know, that's just their life, and they bear that well because they have to. You know, things happen. You know, a child dies or, or, uh, you know, you get some kind of disease, wasting disease that over the next 10 years, you know, it's going to kill you. Well, these aren't things to jump up and, you know, and go, yes, <laughs> you know, these are not, these are not good things to have happen, but you deal with them and you go up from them and you accept that if that's the way it has to be, then that's the way it is. And you'll, you'll accept that and deal with it in a positive way. You don't feel sorry for yourself or whatever you, you function. Do what you have to do. You have responsibilities. They're not always the things you want to do. A lot of times those responsibilities are things, are, are things that you need to do, that you must do. They're you're responsible. You know, you're responsible to do them, but it's not really what you do if you weren't responsible. Well, rather than complaining about that, you need to say, well, this is a responsibility of mine. I will do it, and I'll do it. You know, with a smile, I'll do it cheerfully because it's mine and I own it. And then you do it. So just because things are difficult for you, I mean, almost everybody sees that things are difficult for them. Isn't a reason to be negative. It's not a reason to be unhappy. You can live in a difficult situation and still be happy. So. Happiness isn't about what you meet up with on the outside world. Right. Happiness is about what you bring to the table from the in, you know, inside of you. And you just have to stay positive. Now, when I say stay positive, again, I have to mention, I'm not talking about acting positive. It's not gritting your teeth and, and you know, forcing a smile on your face when you feel miserable. That's not what we're talking about, because that doesn't make you happy. That just generally makes you less happy. Be authentic. You know, it's not about your image. It's not about what you do. It's about what you are. That's an important distinction. You know, it's not just being a 
sticking a smile on your face and not complaining, but you're miserable inside. Now, now you just get more miserable. So, because nobody understands me and nobody's yeah. listening. And, you know. yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's not that. It's not sucking it up and, and you know, toughing it out, being very negative inside, but positive outside. That's a, that is a place that generally degrades mm. and makes you worse off rather than better. You got to be authentic. But if you're authentic and you've gotten rid of fears and you're positive, you, you can't help but be happy. You just will be happy and it doesn't matter really what happens to you. Again, happiness isn't, you know, jumping up and down and laughing. You know, that's not what we mean. We mean that life is good and it's okay and everything's fine. And not only that, it's good. You know, you, you like it. It's positive. You're learning. You're growing. That yeah. makes you happy. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting state of mind or mm -hmm. state of being, I guess, because <laughs> it's it's you can't just you can't force yourself. Like you said, you need to be authentic. So when you're in, you know, a place where you're sad or something's happened, it's, you still have to be with that and then mm -hmm. let it go, because the more you suffer in that, then that's the ego. If yes. you somehow find a gift within it or a bigger picture or just let it go <laughs> mm -hmm. somehow. Yes, well, you let it go and you move on. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that you can never be sad. There are things that happen that are sad. You know, you can be sad about, you know, your significant other or your parent or your child who is very unhappy. You know, you can say, oh, that's too bad that they're having such a hard time. So. Sadness is fine, but that's not the same as being negative. Right. Sadness isn't necessarily negative. It's just an emotion. Right. Now, if you get lost in that sadness and there's nothing in your life but sadness, then that's a problem. But if you feel sad because you see somebody and they're just hurting themselves and you see them hurting themselves and you know that there's nothing you can do about that, there's nothing you can say or nothing you can do that'll really make much difference, then that's sad. But then you recognize it and then you let it go because it's not yours. You just, you know, you, you let that go and you're, you're kind to that person, you know, but it's, it's sad, but you don't dwell in it. You know, you don't wallow in that, in that sadness, but, you know, that then becomes negative and that becomes self-pity. So, yeah, if you're going to wallow in something, wallow in gratitude. You know, you should always think positively. And one of the things about thinking positively is you always be aware of the good things, all the positive things in your life. Yeah. And there's lots of them for most people. I mean, there's very few people, particularly in, in, in our culture, you know, in Canada or in the U.S., that you know don't have a warm place to sleep in the winter and don't have you know food to eat and so on. There's a few. There's people that are homeless. There's people that live under the bridge. You know we we have that and that's sad, but it's very very few people. It's probably you know one hundred to one percent or one thousand to one percent or something. So think about it. Well, life is good. You know I've got a. I maybe don't like my job so much, but, you know, it pays the bills and, you know, I do nice things with my family and we all have a good time. So I'll accept the job. I'll go do it. I'll collect my pay. And, you know, that's one of the things I just have to do, my responsibility, you know, to do that. And then when you're at that job, you're not complaining all the time. You, you know, you do it, do it positively, even if it's something that you don't particularly care to do that much, you do it anyway, because it needs to be done and you get paid for it. <laughs> you know, so you have a positive attitude toward it. And you think all the good things, all the positive things that are, you know, that are in your life, then 
wallow in gratitude. That's fine. <laughs> don't wallow in self pity. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah, don't <laughs> wallow in the negative. Wallow in the positive. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, we kind of get we get caught up, but we. I mean, I think if we haven't grown up enough, we're going to have triggers. But the thing is, is that we can then sort of, then we have a choice where we want to stay or whether we mm -hmm. want to shift it. And I think that's the important thing is that we, we always have a choice. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I don't want people to think that either you're, you're perfect or you're awful. You know, right. it's, it's not that sort of thing. It's not that Oh, I've got a fear. That's terrible. You know, I'm failing. Uh, <laughs> most everybody has fears. You know, that's okay. It's not that you need to be perfect. It's just that you need to be growing. You need to be learning. It's there's no penalty that you have a lot of fear. There's only a penalty if you don't do anything about it. Then the penalty is that you have to live with that fear all the time if you don't do anything about it. You know, that's the that's the downside. So everybody is a mixture of love and fear. Most everybody, they have some love in their hearts, you know, in their life. But if they have, you know, they have fear too. So they have things that make them unhappy and maybe things that make them happy in their life. But you need to change that balance, change that ratio so that there's more things that are happy things and less things that are unhappy things. That's really the point of it all. It's not to feel bad about yourself because you're not perfect. <laughs> it's to say, I am who I am. You know, be authentic. Here's me, warts and all. All right, now, what can I do? You know, how can I learn not to be negative? Well, just maybe stop complaining. <laughs> you know, stop having all your conversations are about what's wrong and the things you don't like. Instead, decide that you're only going to say positive things. And if you don't have anything positive to say, you're not going to say anything at all. Well, just do that for a few months. You see, now, yes, that's your intellect, you know, taking charge there. But it may just turn out to be a habit. It may just turn out that then you realize that you feel better. Life is better. You're not as depressed as you were, you know, well, then you've just learned something. And that is what's important, not being perfect. Just making an effort to change, making an effort to grow, making an effort to get rid of that, that fear and that negativity. And if you do that, even if it takes you, you know, five years just to get rid of one piece of negativity, well, that's good. Another five years, you'll get a second one. In the next five years, you'll get another one. And pretty soon, you'll find that happiness. You know, don't get frustrated with yourself. Oh, I just can't do it. You know, it's, I've tried and it doesn't work. You know, again, that's self-pity. What you need to do is say, well, if that didn't work, then I'll try harder. I'll take a different tact. I'll have a different strategy. I'll try again. You see, that's being positive about it. I can do this. I just need to keep working at it. That's positive. Oh, I can't do it. It's just, you know, I've tried and it doesn't work. That's being negative. So just stay positive and learn and grow. And every, you know, month, every year, you'll become less negative and more positive. And before long, you too will be happy almost all the time. So that's the point. Yeah, it was good to say that because I think people, you know, particularly they listen to me talk, you know, they, they think, oh, I'm so far gone. I've got all this fear. My <laughs> life is a disaster and I am, un, you know, and I am negative and they feel all that. And then they're kind of crushed by it. They feel kind of hopeless in the face of it. But that's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is you are exactly how you are right now. Own it now. Start making a strategy to change it. See, that's a positive attitude. And then work toward changing it. And if what you're doing doesn't work, do something else. You know, and just keep working at it. And what will happen is that before long, you'll be a totally different person. 
and your life won't be that sad line of, you know, pain and, and frustration that it used to be. That stuff will just go away. And suddenly things will start happening and you'll get that promotion and you'll get that you know, new job and that significant other that you really been looking for will turn up. Once you get positive, all kinds of positive things start to happen because now you're, you're seeding the probability in the future for positive things to happen instead of seeding that future probability for negative things to happen. So suddenly your luck changes. Well, it's not luck so much as it is your attitude. Right. Luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure even what that is anymore. <laughs> it's not, it's not, uh, yeah. How do you, how do you even define luck? It's just, it's, yeah, but it's not important. It's what. No, you... it's, it's not, uh, you know, luck is, is when uh, things just seem to always go your way. That's good luck, I guess. And bad <laughs> luck seems to be whenever, when nothing goes your way, everything goes the other way. Right. And, uh, you know, like that, uh, there's a blues song and one of the lines in is if it wasn't for bad luck, I, w I wouldn't have no luck at all. Uh -huh. you know? so. Got to love those country songs. Yeah. <laughs> anyhow. Like, talk about being depressed. Let's listen to country <laughs> music for a while. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh -huh. yes, that's, you know, luck basically is what happens to people who are positive. Positive people are lucky people because positive things just keep happening to them. You know, so if you're positive, then, then, you know, you'll be lucky, but it's not really luck. It's not like there's, there's something out there called luck that, you know, comes and goes. You create that luck. You create that luck by being positive. You, you, the whole, you know, the whole system starts to interact with you in a more positive way, just because you're positive. That's the, you know, our intent modifies future probability. That positive intent makes positive things happen more often around you. So you become positive and uh, you suddenly get lucky. You know, everything just works the way it works. You know, you'll get, you'll just find that, that um, you're amazed even day to day about the, the things that you do turn out to be just exactly the right thing that you should have done. You know, even you get in a big traffic jam and you think, oh, no, I got in this traffic jam. And I'm going to be late. And then you find out that down the road, uh, you know, 10 minutes where you would have been if you didn't get stuck in that jam was a huge accident. You know, something happened there. And then you go, wow, I'm glad I got in that traffic jam because that kept me out of that accident. So your whole life like that, that means you start seeing the positiveness in things rather than looking at the negative parts of things. And when you focus on that positiveness, then you feel luckier because you see all kinds of things that are just terrific and it makes you happy. Your whole life works that way. Right. Hmm. Well, without going into another topic, I think we, I think we're good with this. I've, I know we're yeah. We have a little bit of time, but that'll then take us over. So <laughs> I think this was good. This was a good conversation about happiness and how mm -hmm. it's our choice. And it's not about feeling joy all the time. It's about just letting go of our fears. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a good, it. it's a good yeah, topic. Being happy and being positive are very, very similar, similar things. When you're positive, you're happy. When you're negative, you're unhappy. You know? So <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to be jumping up and down and giggling, you know, to be happy. You just have to be positive. And then life is good. Mm -hmm. You see everything in a positive way. And that's the definition of happy. When your life is just, everything's positive. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not a thing you get by pursuing. Mm -hmm. It's a thing you get by being. being. By getting rid of your negativity. Love it. All right. You've been listening to News for the Heart. We begin at Heart of What Matters with Tom Campbell and, I don't know, Consciousness of Happiness. And we'll be back next month. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Laura.